Hey students, I just want to tell you a really quick way to be able to meet those requirements and all of your assignments to apply three um, applied family science journal articles. So to apply the, the family science research, let me put it that way. So a lot of times students come in and they're confused. Maybe they had undergraduate degrees in psychology or sociology or even anthropology, um, social work, um, out, you know, some other area domain. Each one of those are actually disciplines. And so it, within their discipline, they have specific journal articles. So in sociology, you're going to find sociology journals of all types. You're going to find social work journals. You're going to find psychology journals. Family Science too has their own journals. And so to make that easy for students, what we've done is we've listed um, all of those journal. If you'll go to the Find Articles tab, first of all, you can search within each of those listed um, journal articles. So we have them listed here. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, and you can, and if you'll notice down here, they've added a new link, which says you can search multiple family science journals all at the same time. So you go ahead and you put your information in there because when you click on it, it's going to ask you. Um, specific information on what you're looking for. So here's the here's the um, here's the fine point of this. You need to be very specific. A lot of times, if you're very specific and you can't find any journal articles, what I would suggest is getting just a little bit more vague about it and seeing since sometimes that'll bring it up first. So anyway, once you find it in there, you're, it'll bring up the articles, and then of course you want to look for the ones that have been published in the last five years. For instance, this family process article. Um, is was processed in 2021. So you want to take a look at that as well. However, um, the other way is that you can literally go into the journals one by one and search within the journal to find your article. Now, as you can see, this particular journal has 3,924 results, which doesn't make that fast for you. So you want to hit the queue where you can actually search within the journal. Um, another way to do it is by opening up a free Google Scholar account. And mine's already open, so I'm not going to show you how to open it. Um, once you get there, once you go to scholargoogle.com, it's very easy to open a free account. It does not charge for this. You can build your profile or not choose to build your profile. I built one because I'm a professor and I'm also published. And so um, I've listed my publications here. Do not be intimidated by that. You're not being judged by it. Um, so, but what you can do in here after you get done with your, um, is to go to your library. And as you can see, I'm going to show you how to set this up. So literally Google Scholar goes out there and looks on specific topics that I've asked it to, right? And um, I have labels listed here. Uh, you can create your own labels and it'll look for it 24 seven while you're sleeping. So um, let me go back because I can't seem to find my place where I was when I first got on here. So before my profile right here. So what you can do, you can have your library here and it will show up as your library after you've started doing searches. But where you want to look for first, this is the caveat. This is the, the point that will get you the um, articles that you're looking for, the more specific are, is you do an alert. Now, as you can see, I have quite a few alerts. We're just going to go down here and I'm going to talk you through a new alert. So say you're looking for something particular to um, a socio-cultural um, background, say you're looking for something on Asians, you're looking something specific on um, people of color, um, indigenous people, you can put that in there. You can put in, say for instance, indigenous, indigenous parents. I don't know, I spell things right, and then I have to correct myself, so let me, let me fix that. Indigenous parents or Indigenous families or Indigenous children, and then you can create that list. And what it will do is it will look, but you also need, here's the thing, if you're looking for it for um, the purposes of our courses, you're going to want to put um, clarifier there. So what you do is you enter in subcategories such as parenting um, or maybe children. Uh, preschool, whatever it is that you're looking for specifically. And the more specific you get, 
the um, more defined it's going to be in what articles. So you won't end up with a ton of articles that you're not interested in, but it'll refine that for you. And so it'll get more defined the more um, parameters that you put in there, the more descriptors that you put in there. And then once you create that alert, I'm gonna create it and then delete it. Um, what it'll do is it'll literally look for, um, see, I'm gonna hit over here and hit cancel, but it'll literally look for these articles while you're asleep. And then what happens is, is it goes back into whatever um, profile that you have. Like I used my, um, my personal Gmail account. Please don't email me there because this is like my junk folder. That's where I go to get all my research papers. I never go in there looking for messages. So please don't email me there. Remember, always email each other through the Wilmu system. Yeah, give me a little caveat there. That I can literally go in here and take a look, for instance, um, on one of my alerts and see what's been coming up. So all results, well, actually, it doesn't show me the results here. I fibbed about that. Um, I have to go to my Google um, email in order to see that. But as you can see, it's pretty easy to be able to do that. The other thing I'd like to encourage you to do is to set up a RefWorks account. Let's see if I can get in here. Oops, I did. So what I suggest for students, now my folders look different because I'm doing research on a regular basis. What I suggest is that students set these folders up, like add a folder and say AFM 6610 is your first class. Then you would add this, and I'm not gonna hit save. You would add this as a folder. And then whenever you have research articles that you find, you upload those documents straight from your um, straight from your desktop, and you can go in there. Like for instance, um, I've got probably I've got some research articles in here somewhere right now, but under let's say like for childism or rent. So I could like literally upload this beyond adult childism into that folder. Now the reason that's so um, valuable to students is when you get done and you're done writing your papers, and you can upload your papers in here as well. When you're done writing your papers, you can do something called create your reference section. It's a bibliography, basically. And so when you hit on it, see, it's like pulled up a bunch of articles that I had on a particular topic that I was just into. It's actually formatted in APA format, so you don't even need to bother worrying about it because it will upload it and do your reference section. But can you see how useful that would be when you um, create folders for each one of your, say, 60, 6, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80? And then by the time you get to your practicum, if you've kept the same topic, then you'll actually have a, um, the ability to go in there and click on which articles you used for your papers in your practicum or your capstone as well. And so it'll just create it for it. It's very time saving. And I know a lot of our students are working. Most of you are juggling several different hats, whether it's um, elderly parents or young children or families or, you know, several different jobs. Everyone seems to be juggling in this program. And so I'm constantly trying to update information so that students can find their information quicker. And then that way they can dive into the quality of their responses into their, um, into their responses to the actual, let me stop sharing, to their actual assignments. So I hope this video has helped you today. And um, oh, one last thing, the free Grammarly one. Don't bother buying the professional one I did. It wasn't really worth it. But if you can install Grammarly, if you're like me, I like my thoughts come out really fast and I just start typing. And sometimes I don't notice when I've misspelled a word, but Grammarly immediately highlights it and then offers a suggestion. And that's another way to cut your time down. These are just time savers. And I'm very cognizant of this because I went back to school when I had three small children in in, you know, still raising them by as a single parent. And I know how much, you know, we, we get torn between our families and our schooling and, and doing what's best for ourselves. So hopefully this video will make that a little bit easier for you. Thank you. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me in the chair of the program of Applied Family Science. And you can reach me at Mary Kay, all one word, M-A-R-Y-K-A-Y period, Keller at wilmu.edu. Thanks and have a wonderful day.